the Battle of Megiddo. The year is 1458 BCE, and the regent female pharaoh of Egypt, Hashtaput, has just died, leaving the throne of the Egyptian Empire to Tutmosis III. Hashtaput's rule had been highly successful, being one of the most powerful, resourceful, and effective rulers in the country's history. Largely kept in his regent's shadow, the untested pharaoh inherited a well-maintained empire with a very well-organized military system. However, with his ascension to the throne, opportunistic vassal kingdoms in the empire saw a chance to rebel and claim their independence once more. Led by the Prince of Kadesh, the Syrian and Canaanite states of the empire rose up in rebellion, hoping to take advantage of the untested new pharaoh. However, the situation was made even more serious with the addition of the Prince of Megiddo to the rebellion. Megiddo commanded the main trade routes between Egypt and the kingdoms of Mesopotamia, and as a result was a strategically important city. The coalition between the Canaanites of Megiddo and the Syrians of Kadesh attracted others dissatisfied with the Egyptian rule, who gathered their forces outside of the city of Megiddo in late 1458 or 1457 BC. Tutmosis III wasted no time in mobilizing his forces and marching from Thebes in Egypt towards the rebel stronghold. This army numbered around 10,000 to 20,000 strong, being made up of infantry and Egyptian chariots. This army covered 150 miles in 10 days and rested at the loyal city of Gaza before moving on to the town of Yemen. Here, Tutmosis III halted to discuss with his senior staff a problem. Problem was that their route was blocked by a valley, with three possible routes through it. One was a narrow pass which would require the army to march in single file, where the risk of ambush was huge. There was also two safer options going around the pass, but these were very predictable, and were the most logical and sensible route to take. After much conferring, the generals were in favour of the passes around the valley. Tutmosis therefore decided the best route to take was the narrow and dangerous pass, saying that he would rather take the more dangerous option to prove his bravery. The narrow pass meant that chariots had to be disassembled and the horses had to be led in single file. Through luck, Tutmosis emerged on the other side with no rebel army there to meet him. The rebels had been expecting him to take one of the two safer routes, and as such had moved a majority of their forces to guard these passes, leaving the route to Megiddo open. Tutmosis recognised the opportunity, he set up camp and during the night arrayed his forces close to the enemy. The rebels were on a high ground next to the fortress of Megiddo. The Egyptian line was arranged in a concave formation that threatened both rebel flanks, with the pharaoh placed in the centre with his chariots. Early in the morning, the Egyptians attacked the rebel line. The infantry were soon engaged in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. A combination of position and numbers, along with an early bold attack, broke the enemy's will to fight, with their line immediately collapsing. Those near to the city fled to it, closing the gates behind them. Complete victory was within Tutmosis' grasp. However, his ill-disciplined army soon gave up chasing the rebels and began to plunder the enemy camp and looting their dead. In this confusion, the scattered rebel forces, including the kings of Kadesh and Megiddo, managed to rejoin the rebels in the city. Using ropes made of clothing, many rebels were able to escape into the city by climbing up the walls. The resulting siege would see the rebels take up to seven months to surrender. The city and its citizens were spared with Tutmosis III requiring each of the defeated kings to send a son to the Egyptian court as a hostage to ensure the king's loyalties to Egypt. And thus, the rebellion against the new pharaoh Tutmosis III was put down. Thank you for watching and listening. Comment below what battles you would like to see next and I'll be sure to get to them. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. I've been the Ancient History Guy and as always, I'll be seeing you later.